Uh, I'm Isaac Gilinski, the founder of uh, Brico Analytics. For those of you that have not uh, sat through any of our presentations, we're a global macro research service that uses technical analysis. Our technical tools are a time model, a velocity model, a price model, and some sentiment indicators. And then we divide the uh, analysis into two parts, a discretionary research and a systematic research. Um, we've, we've been here this year two times. We came in March, and then we also came in August. And we, were we, we have been discussing a technical pattern called an ending diagonal technical pattern, which is a pattern formation that we've been seeing in the equity markets that has been, it has been forming since the COVID lows in March of uh, 2020. The, the ending diagonal pattern is a pattern where you have two converging lines that e eventually get narrower and narrower, and at the end you have an endpoint. And internally, you can label uh, an ending diagonal pattern with five Elliott waves. And once the diagonal pattern is complete, then markets reverse and change trends. So um, we were here in March, we spotted the pattern and we said markets are gonna have significant more upside or they were gonna, they're gonna have more upside until the pattern completes. Then we got here in August and we said the same thing, although we were tilting a little bit more bearish, we were waiting specifically for a pattern to complete on the Russell uh, 2000. And, um, if you look at the Russell 2000 chart, we were in August and we thought the Russell needed to rally up to about 2,500. And um, that rally happened or transpired in November. And so we have no more uh, bullish indicators left. And so now we're basically um, calling the end of these diagonal patterns and for the start of what we think is gonna be uh, a very significant bear market. It will probably be a bear market of the same magnitude as 2000 to 2002 and 2007 to 2009. So going back to our um, S&P chart, we think the S&P chart, the S&P topped in November and it's on its way down um, to revisit the COVID lows of 2000, uh, 2200. The uh, VIX is going to start to break out higher and also visit the COVID highs of, of 85. Um, Russell 2000 top at about 2,500, and then it's gonna start, it, it's gonna start to decline to about 1,200. Uh, German DAX, as you can see, the pattern is even more clear than uh, in the prior two. You have these two converging lines that form a triangle near the end, and the DAX broke below the line. Uh, we've highlighted it with a circle, so the DAX, and the Dow, sorry, this is the DAX chart. The DAX and the Dow both should re revisit their COVID low. So the DAX should go to about 8,000 and the Dow uh, should go about to about 20,000. The DAX and the Dow have similar patterns. Um, Apple, we believe topped yesterday. And again, it's gonna start its way down to the COVID lows or maybe a little bit higher. 80s are our, our, our target. Um, in terms of rates and uh, FX, uh, dollar yen is finishing a very long triangle pattern um, since 2015. This is a bullish triangle pattern, which means dollar yen should, should strengthen or dollar should strengthen, yen should weaken. Um, and it should revisit the highs of 2015, which is about 125, 126 on the yen. And so if the yen is gonna break out higher, um, we have a very bullish, we, we have a very bearish forecast on, on bond prices and we think bond yields should rise and they should start to surge. Um, and our target is anywhere between 4% and 6%. Now, rising treasury yields to very high levels should be bearish for equity markets. So at some point, yields and equities should stop um, converging. There should be a divergence. These two markets are correlated. Uh, crude oil topped in October at 84, and we believe that's the end of the so-called inflationary wave that we've been hearing about in the news cycle, and there should be a deflationary wave next, and crude should go down about 50% from the 80 level. Crude has already started to crash. Um, and then lastly, um, 
the Bitcoin market, which is significantly overvalued, uh, should also start to crash. Uh, Bitcoin, we believe, topped at around 70,000. And once Bitcoin uh, uh, you know, starts to go down, this, the, the decline should be significant. And we expect it to be like a 95 peak to trough decline. And for Bitcoin to revisit the lows it reached in December of 2018, which is about 3,000. And um, with that, as usual, I would like to open it up for uh, questions. Um, Nalish says, Isaac, thank you for your presentation. These are some bold predictions. Uh, what is your basis? The basis for the predictions is um, what we've been discussing all along. It's our tools, our price tool, our sentiment indicators, our velocity indicators, and, and our time model. And then we take that analysis and we put it into charts and we can devise a forecast. So it's our tech, you know, our basis is our technical analysis. Nalish wants to know, um, have you back? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, a little better. Okay. Nalish wants to know, have you back tested this? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, the back test is, you know, we've been in business for 10 years. So you guys already know what we do. So you can go back to our prior forecasts and see what we've been saying. So we've been bullish since the March 2020 COVID lows, and now we're turning bearish. So we've had two years of bullish market calls that have all panned out. Again, you know, there, we don't need to back this. You, we have already, you know, real, real forecasts. We were here in August when the Russell 2000 was here in a range, and we said Russell 2000 is in a trading range, and it's going to break out of the trading range and get to 2500 and then reverse lower. And so far, the Russell has done that. It's reversed lower, and it hit our target of 2,500. So more than back this, we we have actual forecasts. Historically, have these chart patterns ever predicted a crash that did not occur? This is from Donald. Um, have they predicted a crash that ha has not occurred? Yes, I mean chart for charts are for bullish forecasts and for bearish forecasts. So I think these questions are redundant. We said in March and in August that the markets were going to rally. We didn't say they were going to go down. Now, in November, we think markets stop and we're, they're, they're, they're in the process of, of crashing. So you just have to interpret the charts uh, in, at any given time point. So the time point right now is for a bear market to start unfolding very soon. What is your uh, target on the S&P? Uh, 2200. 2200. Yeah, it's the COVID lows. These, the, these ending diagonal patterns, once they end, they go back to where they started. So um, the SP bottomed on March 23rd at 2191. And so it should get back to that level. Okay. And um, what's the time frame for which you see this uh, beginning? Well, it's starting right now. I think the big, big, it's starting right now. We had a big, you know, we have a, we had a big decline in the Russell, in Germany, in some other markets. We had so, somewhat of a mild decline in the S&P in November. Markets are bouncing today. Uh, they, they, they may bounce a little more and then, you know, we may get back up to the highs and that may, may last, you know, another month. And then we're going to get ready to go down in 2022. 2022, we're going to go into a bear market. Got you, got you. So, um, what is the um, you know the call on the uh, dollar yen? Uh, one twenty six. Sorry, one twenty at, at one twenty six. It could it could go it could go higher, right? It just has to it has to get above the highs of uh, June two thousand and fifteen, which is one twenty five eighty six. So one hundred and twenty six. Now that going up, hasn't that historically been a bullish um, like indicator? Yes. For so, US equities. Yes, but it's also it, it also it, it's also correlated to the bond market or to treasury yields. 
right? right. So, so if, if yields go higher and they go significantly higher, right, then the dollar yen is going to fall, follow treasury yields. And then what you could have is a decoupling between the equity market and the treasury market, where higher yields just begin to scare the equity markets, e equities begin to drop and yields go higher. And then dollar yen just chases the higher treasury yields because of the differential between the, the, the US bond market and the JGBs, Japanese government bonds. All right, so how has this played out in your, in your view uh, with regards to the 10 years since we had you on uh, at the beginning of the summer? Yeah, so we've been saying the yields are going to get to 2% since um, we've been here. Uh, it, was, it was in March. And, you know, yields got to about one, you know, 170. And then they, they went down a little bit. Um, and we said that we wanted to see higher yields before, before we turned uh, bearish on equities. And that has uh, happened. Uh, you know, whether yields and equities you know, continue to be correlated and equities start to go down and then yields go a little bit lower. I mean, that may happen, but I think eventually you're going to see a situation where yields go higher and equities go lower. So both of those markets are going to be coupled. Have you done any work on gold? This is from Daniel Zuckerman. Yeah, I, I, I meant to bring that chart again, but I mean, we've been neutral, neutral on gold. We haven't been bear, bearish or bullish because we've been, we, we thought gold was kind of stuck in some sort of uh, triangular pattern. Um, it, it appears that gold may be breaking higher. So if we would make a, a, a forecast, if we would make a directional forecast in gold right now, it may be a bullish forecast, which may, may be tied to uh, like slightly lower yields right now with a lower dollar yen, but that would be bearish for equities anyways. All right. Um... So there's a gentleman who's saying that these are bold predictions. What's your basis? Have you back tested any of this? Yeah, I think I already answered that question. Okay. We have a track. We have a ten-year track record in the forecasting business. So I mean, you can just uh, search that up. All right. Uh, did the converging flag pattern occur before the crashes in 2000 and 2008? Uh, the, these uh, these. A ending diagonal, you know, the converging diagonal pattern or the ending diagonal pattern that we have been analyzing, uh, we started uh, seeing these patterns in the first pattern we saw was actually in the summer of 2015. Um, and it, wor it worked in 2015, where we thought the S&P was stopping in the summer of 2015 and was going to revisit the lows of 2014. So um, I believe the S&P in 2015 was topping at about 2140, and it had hit a low in October of 2014 at 1820. And so we thought there was going to be like a 15% drop in the S&P uh, in the summer of 2015. So that happened. So there was a converging ending diagonal pattern in 2015 that's a lot smaller than this one that happened in 2015. And then the second one we saw was um, right into the, into the pre-COVID crash. So it was the 2020 highs, which was also very reliable because the S&P was stopping then at about 3,300. And we thought it was gonna go down to 2,300, which was the lows it had, it had been at over Christmas in 2018. So our experience with these diagonal patterns are 2015 and, and, and then 2020. We didn't see quite a diagonal pattern in 2007. It was a different technical formation. And we also didn't see a diagonal pattern in 2000, which leads me to conclude that this is a much more bearish setup than we've seen, you know, ever, because diagonals, you know, are more, um, they, they are, they happen at the end of technical formations, which could be at different, different degrees of trend. So you can do what's called cycle analysis and you can have a, a super cycle top or a cycle top of multiple degrees of trend. And these trends usually mark tops that happen you know, every 10 years, every 20 years, every 50 years, or even every 100 years. So the fact that we didn't see a diagonal pattern in 2000 or in 2007 leads us to conclude that this is a more serious type of top in equities. And we're, gonna, we're looking at a much bigger decline that we had in the prior two bear markets that we've had over the last 20 years. So Isaac, there's a gentleman who's asking about the um, at what level <clears throat> on the S and P uh, would there be a confirmation 
uh, that we're breaking down out of this upward channel? So right now, right now, like very, very near term uh, on the S&P, uh, we would like the we sorry we would uh, uh, we would like the S and P to um, co um, align with the with the Russell right so the Russell two thousand already got to the two hundred day moving average the S and P is very you know far from it which I believe is about forty three hundred so I, I think these patterns will confirm with a drop in the S and P to forty three hundred and then you need Apple to get hit I mean Apple's just very high so if Apple can get down to about 143, 44, 45 around that level, we begin to get confirmations that these patterns are unfolding. Obviously, if, if we don't get these type of moves yet, that, that just means these diagonal patterns are still forming and we may have another fake sell-off right now with another rally to another higher high before we collapse. But anyways, I mean, this I, I, we just think this is very, very uh, near its end, if it hasn't ended already. I mean, we believe it ended already. And unless the S&P takes out 47.43, I mean, we're, for, for all we know is, is we're already in a bear market. But, you know, if we get to 4,300, then that's definitely confirmation that we're, we're breaking below the diagonal pattern and, 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 and we're starting. If you look at the bottom trend line in this chart, the S&P is not be below it. But the, um, the, so you, you, the Dow, you, you see that you did, you did little, call, you we did, did call little, the reversal. We, we drew uh, a circle on the on the Dow. The Dow already broke below the pattern, right? It, it was small, but it broke. And then Germany stacks did the same thing. It already broke below the diagonal pattern. So we want to see that break in the S and P. It hasn't happened yet. And 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 I mean, a, a nice break to confirm this pattern would be, you know, a decline to forty three hundred. A decline to forty three hundred. So yeah. yes. Uh, Okay, so hopefully that answers your uh, question on there. Um, so there's a gentleman who's asking about the major banks and Wall Street firms currently predicting a 0% total return in the stock market over the next 10 years. Do you agree with that? Or do you think the returns over the next 10 years will be higher or lower than 0%? Well, the returns will be lower than 0% if we think the equity market is going to go down 50%, right? Uh, but this, I guess, is at a, a 10 year time horizon. Right? I mean, I, again, I mean, if we get a 50 percent drop in 2022, I don't really you know, I, I can't really help you on a 10 year prediction. Right. It's a pretty big prediction if we go down 50 percent in, in one year. And then once we go down 50 percent, then you have to evaluate, you know, what kind of damage, you know, has the market suffered? Can it bottom at 2200 or this is going to get worse? And a lot of it also depends on the political outcome in this country. Right. Who's gonna, you know, win Congress in 2022, and who's gonna be our president in 2024? I mean, because I think we have two different, you know, our, our our political system has two very different, you know, sets of parties right now with two opposite views, and that's gonna determine where the SMP um, bottoms, uh, depending on who's in the White House, you know, by the time you know this bear market is over. So Isaac, what is the um, time frame for these predictions? We keep getting that question. Uh, uh, 2022, 2022. In next year, we, we we should go into a bear market. That that you believe just began. We're in the opening stages yes. of a, a a a topping. Yes, the bear market started on November 22, 2021, at 4743 in the S and P. Unless the S and P rallies about that level, everybody on on this call or on this chat should prepare for a bear market so we're gonna we're we're, we're gonna the, our forecast will be delayed time wise if the s p rallies above 47 43 again i would prefer and everybody else would prefer that we don't go into a bear market i mean it's nicer that we don't so it would be better if we rally to 4800 or 4900 or 5000 wherever it is but again, I'm like the weatherman. I just got to look at charts. And if the charts are bearish, I just got to pre predict, you know, the bear market, even though I would prefer that, you know, this thing takes another six months to unfold. I mean, I, again, bull, bull markets are better than bear markets. So I don't want to come here and predict a bear market uh, now if, you know, I think it's going to happen in six months. So I, I just got to predict what I see in the charts. So what we see in the charts, it does, this started or this already started. And I, unless the S&P can get about 47, 43, then we are already in a bear market. Bear markets start 
uh, uh, gradually. So you'll gradually go down and then you'll su suddenly go down. So, I mean, it, it can be slow and then we can have a lot of counter trend bounces and then we can go down hard. But I think the for first quarter of 2022 is should be very rough for the equity market. All right. So with regards to rates, they're going higher, correct? That's what correct. I see in the chart. Yes, the, but, the trend. They're the, going to be range bound in the, between this like two to six percent range. The, the the trend in rates is is higher, right? That and and then you know our, our friend you know Jer Jerome Powell you know is already tape he's already tapering, right? So I I think it's going to be very hard for the Fed to reverse course on 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 their on their views of you know easy monetary policy. Once the rate markets start to go higher, so if, you know if the if the if the ten-year yield gets to two percent, and then the markets begin to panic and start to go down, and Powell, you know, says, "Hey, you know, we're we're not we're not going to take we're we're not going to taper. We're going to do more QE. The markets may actually take that negative and punish the you know the, the Fed and the bond market, and and Treasury yields may go even higher. So I think we're in a trend where we're, we're in a direction of higher higher yields." Uh, whether we we range bound between two percent and one percent and two percent before we go to six percent, anything's possible. But I just don't think we're going to see thirty basis points anytime soon again, which was the low in twenty twenty. And if the Fed tries to reverse course after the bear market started, it may be too late. And of course, the Fed already is going to taper, so yields should go higher. And uh, if yields should go higher, at some point, it's going to punish the the equity markets. So I think the equity markets are cornered. And they're going to have a very hard time from here on forward going, you know, significantly higher, especially with the Fed's, you know, semi hawkish position now, where they're going to begin to taper very soon. So Isaac, talk to us about WTI West Texas Intermediate. I know you got a chart in there calling for a forty percent pullback. Um, you know, what what velocity do you see that trade playing out, and what's your confidence level that? that's going to actually happen. Well, I mean, that's tied to the equity markets. And usually, you know, equities and oil, you know, they, they, they tend to top together. So if our forecast on the S&P topping at 47.43 is correct, if we end up being correct, calling the top at 47.43, oil topped at $84, right? So it's just going to go down. And so we've had a lot of talk of, you know, inflation, inflation, everything you hear right now is inflation. Well, you know, a 50% drop in oil from peak to, to trough from the 80 to the 40 level is going to immediately send a deflationary cycle wave across markets, and there's going to be no inflation. So, I mean, we think that given where sentiment is and with everybody very in, in, inflation-based position, you know, I think the, 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 the opposite should happen is we, we, should have, we should have deflation, which means oil should go down, and it should, it should have already started. So Isaac, um, there's a couple of questions in here that basically, if, gentleman's asking if rates go higher, wouldn't the financials do well? And um, a, a different person's asking, what's your confidence level on all these predictions happening in 2022? Can you share the presentation? Um, so people are looking to understand how certain you are that these bold predictions you're making are gonna actually play out? Well, I mean, this is the third presentation we do in 2021. Again, we came here in March, we came here in uh, um, August, and then we came here in November, and I'm gonna encourage all participants that are on here today to go back and review our presentation from March and our presentation from August. And then you can compare and contrast. I think you know that's gonna be your, your best source of information in terms of our confidence level, our charts, you know, our back testing, everything. There's, you, you now have a way to compare our work because this is the third time we're on here. And I, I think Mike, they can reach out to you guys and get the prior presentations or the prior videos. Well, the prior just, videos you, are all on the, uh, on the web, but maybe when we do the, um, the follow-up of this presentation, we can uh, put links in uh, the email to the, the, uh, pre, the previous ones. Now, what, what I'll say to the people listening today is you were crystal clear to keep long exposure and, you know, like not go short, not sell. 
uh, you know, on, during this last presentation, and you were explaining to people how difficult that was, um, you know, of a call to make. So, Isaac, what has changed in your mind to take you from telling people to stand the course with risk appetite to, hey, here's a bold prediction. The market's going to sell off, right? Because I, yeah, I, what, I already know what the video says, right? I do no, the what, videos with you. What, what's changed is our, is our friend called the S&P 500, right? So if you go to the S&P 500 and you, and you go right here where we were in March, it was at 4,000. And I think we did a slide saying, hey, you know, there's an ending diagonal pattern forming. However, the S&P can rally another 10% in our face, right? And then so when, and then we came here in August and the S&P was already at 4,500 and it had already rallied 10%, you know, in our face and gone to 4,500. And we said, well, you know, it may rally another, you know, 10% and get to 4,800. So we, we've spotted, we spotted this pattern in, in January and February, we reached out to our, our excellent friend, Mike Corselli, and said, hey, Mike, we, we're spotting an ending diagonal pattern in, 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 in the S&P. Please get us on Zoom so we can present this to the members of Flya. And we came on here in March and we said, there's an ending diagonal pattern forming on the S&P. The S&P is at 4,000. However, this thing may go on for another you know, few months and the S&P may get to 4,400. It happened, that happened, right? So then we came back in August and we said, well, we told you guys we were going to get to 4,400 and the S&P uh, because there was an end ending diagonal where our, our forecast may overshoot because these diagonals overshoot. And we're not ready to call the top now because rates are still low and the Russell still hasn't rallied. So, you know, we need a few more months for this pattern to top and we may go up another 10 percent from that 4,400 level. So we ended up getting to 4743. You know, the Russell got to 2,500. The Russell got absolutely smashed. Over the last two weeks, it went down 12%. And then there's really nothing else for us to come here and tell you on the bullish side. I mean, our patterns are complete and we've taken eight months to make this prediction. And we've come here and given you, you know, 20 slides on, a, on each presentation over our eight months, three over two different, this is our third presentation we do. I mean, it's it just becomes very hard to continue to you know create more upside when patterns are complete. And you know, we have you can compare and contrast between what we said in March, what we said in August, and what we're saying right now. So the S&P 500 is our benchmark, right? It was at 4,000 and you know we were seeing the diagonal pattern, which was bearish, but we didn't call the top. Now we're calling the top and it's 800 points above where it was when we first started making this forecast. So Isaac, um, you know, we are about out of time here. Um, are there any concluding remarks that you would like to uh, share with the group today and any, any thoughts that you want to leave people with? No, I mean, I, I think I, I already said everything. All right. So now I just want to get into a commercial plug for Brickle Analytics. Um, how do people uh, subscribe to your research and compensate you for uh, the work that you do? Yeah, if you can send an email to outreach at bricklanalytics.com, outreach at bricklanalytics.com, we will send you a link for you to subscribe. And, and we, have a, we have a monthly subscription service and we have a, an annual subscription service. So with regards to the subscription service, what does that specifically include? That, that includes uh, a quantitative report that we send out on a, on a daily basis, which is a signal, a daily signal on the S&P and on oil. It's a directional signal with a model that has a track record, a 10, 12 year track record. It's on our, pri our prior presentations, the track records. We didn't bring the track record today or we didn't illustrate it. But you get a daily signal uh, and, and that gives you a direction of the S&P and oil with a 10 year track record. And then every weekend you get a macro commentary and, the, and these charts attached. So it's a, it's, it's a, a daily uh, quant signal oil and the S&P and then a weekly macro report with, with about 20 charts of the 20 different markets we look like at. And these charts here are from our, you know, our, our, our weekly, our weekend report that we sent out last week, uh, last Sunday few days so, ago so every week isaac you have um on the weekend a report that goes out tell us what goes into um making and producing that report and what addition are you what, what addition are you at no we're almost at we, we have almost five thousand editions 
Very, that's very impressive, by the way. We're like what? I think 4,400, 4,500. We're, we're about 500 editions away from 5,000. So you've been cataloging this every single week. We've been, ca every single time we send out a report to a subscriber, we have an issue number. And our first, you know, issue was in February of 2011. So we're, we're getting close to our 11 year anniversary of sending out research to, you know, subscribers. Inside that report, what can people expect? They, I, I think I've already answered that question. I don't think so. I don't think you were clear about like, you know, what comes out inside that uh, weekend report. The weekend report has macro, macro commentary where we look at the macro markets. Macro markets are divided into four sectors, commodities, equities, you know, yields or rates or bonds and, 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 and equity. So equities, bonds, currencies, um, um, and, 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 and commodities. So we look at the four different sectors, we produce the, in different types of charts and we write macro commentary and we comment on all of that. Got you. And you give people uh, occasional equity trades once in a while? Or I mean, they, 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 if they're premium subscribers to our service, then yes, we, we talk to you on the phone, but for the basic subscription service, um, we don't you know, give any, any phone advice. No, or we don't not, have, not talking about phone advice. You, does, does the regular subscriber get an occasional uh, equity um, equity charts with the price. Oh, oh, they get everything. The, the, the regular okay. subscriber, get, they get all of our equity charts. These charts that are up on here are available to our regular subscribers. So inside of, inside of your insight and analysis, you do a lot of, I guess, uh, inflection point uh, analysis when things are changing, correct? Correct. Both tops and bottoms. Correct. All right. So. This is an inflection point. When we were here in March of 2021, that was not an inflection point. And when we were here over the summer, that was not an inflection point. Right now, it's an inflection point. It's the, it's the opposite inflection point to March of 2020. All right. Isaac, thank you so much for coming in. It's always a pleasure to have you. For those of you that are interested in uh, subscribing to Brickle Analytics Research, it's outreach at brickleanalytics.com. Please visit the site, uh, request some information, and we will follow up with, uh, I guess, uh, some sort of link um, where you can subscribe. So, Isaac, thank you for coming in. Have a great thank day. You. Thanks.